think I'm perfect. Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and welcome to a 1000 subscriber special. Learn telekinesis, umbro, hydro, and imago kinesis all in one video. Now in terms of rolling objects, you don't want to get yourself overwhelmed with the size of an object. Regardless of how large it is, you are able to move that object. It's all about being comfortable and allowing your consciousness to flow out. You can move a large object as you see me rolling this log here just as easily as you could spin a small side wheel. That's the truth. Now continuing on with telekinesis, you see me here spinning this hanging uh, footrest, an old footrest that I've had. Um, what, what is happening here is that uh, people don't understand um, the simplicity of psychokinesis. When an object is in uh, suspension, as you can see here it's hanging, it's suspended in the air, it becomes more easier for an individual to gain connection and be able to manipulate and rotate more easier and it's the same thing as a simple side wheel a side wheel you can say in simplistic terms is suspended and is balanced and basically hinged in a center point where um you can make a better connection and allow your chi energy to surround it along with some slight ambient energy to be able to have that manipulation uh with the object now with hydrokinesis, um, the principle is basically the same. Um, the object is suspended on top of uh, liquid, water. It is the same thing as a side wheel balanced on a nail or a pin or a hanging can or the footrest that you saw hanging uh, before this clip. They're both the same and allows you to be able to um, have more faster results and have more immediate uh, connection with the object, allowing for the object to kind of float around and bob around a little bit and allowing yourself to um, um, create a sense of belief and a sense of confidence that you're able to connect and manipulate it with less strain and right here I'm going to move this uh, green ball floating on water toward me and under this part of the bridge now what's going on here is that I'm letting the object feel me feel my consciousness but I'm letting it go where it wants now at the same time I'm also suggesting not forcing but suggesting and persuading it to go toward me so that's what's going on you're balancing two things there that's called control now with umbrakinesis, um, you have to work with the physical object itself before working on the object's shadow. Because basically they're both the same thing. Um, once you're able to move, as you can see here on the far left, I'm manipulating the uh, PSI wheel's shadow. I'm, I'm manipulating it through its shadow. And the only way that I could do that is to first understand the anatomy and the intricacies and the sensitivities of the physical object first before working and moving on to its two-dimensional projection, it's cast its shadow on the wall. Now you have to think of the shadow as a physical object itself, because it basically is. But what it is, is that it's just a two-dimensional version of it being casted on the wall. Now once you start to make that connection and believe of the two-dimensional object being the physical object, you are then able to then manipulate the physical object through that very shadow and make a connection. You may have to use just a little bit of imagination in order to build a connection with the shadow, but you'll be able to get it. Now again, we're coming back to the technique of working with objects that are suspended or hanging in the air, as you saw with the foot wrist. Um, you're able to uh, have a better connection with the object and manipulate the object a little bit more easier because you have more space above and below the object. When you have a, a PSI wheel uh, balanced on a nail, you do not have that uh, on the bottom of it. There is not enough uh, space for um, ambient energy to grow and for chi energy to build up. And what you want is that you see the hanging can here. There is not a lot, there is nothing under it, and there's really nothing on top. Just a, it's just suspended with a string. And so what that does that allows the ambient energy to surround and your chi energy to surround it because no matter what, even if there's no air around there is some ambient energy just very slight slight naturalistic room temperature um uh um, ambient energy is very low you know and it works with your mental energy your spirit energy to allow to manipulate the object and to control it and move it towards you you let the object feel your consciousness let it go where it wants 
but at the same time suggest it softly to go the other way. That's control. Now with imagokinesis, it's the same thing as working with umberkinesis. Instead of working with an object shadow, you are working with the object reflection that's being projected by the physical object onto a mirror. Now, the same thing, the same principle, you have to work with the physical object first. Get to know the physical object, the intricacies, the weight, the subtleties of moving the object, the physicality of the object, and then move on to its uh, projected reflection in a mirror. And with that, you have to then think of the reflection of that object as the physical object itself, allowing yourself to gain control and manipulate it as you would exactly the same as you would with the physical object. As you can see here, I'm using the hanging foot wrist reflection in order to gain a connection and manipulate it the way that I want to. Now the end goal for truly mastering imago kinesis, just like umber kinesis, is to manipulate the reflection of that object on the mirror without affecting the physical object itself which would be mind-boggling cool and just as awesome as self-levitation, I believe. Now to end the video, um, I want to talk about um, being able to feel relaxed, feel in tune with yourself, and allow yourself to balance all the stresses of your personal life. Allow yourself to balance all of the joys and stresses of your personal life and allow your own personal um, existence in your life to perpetuate your psychokinesis abilities. Because it is unavoidable, it's psychokinesis, it's a personal experience that only you will know when you are gaining control and manipulating an object truthfully with your psycho abilities. Now remember, to have control over an object, you have to send your energy both directly and indirectly at the object. Now here is a real good example of what I'm talking about. This is the first um, ever uh, perfectly performed um, live stream of me doing a psychokinesis demonstration live um, for YouTube on, on Hangouts on Air, I guess it's called. And uh, basically, I've been doing this for like a year now, a year and a month, and I've let myself balance all of my woes and my happiness and internal um, struggles and joys and just let those things perpetuate the ability and the understanding of telekinesis and being able to wrap my mind around it and develop and let it grow within me and that is the device that i want to give you you can do it guys everyone will be doing it in 20 years thank you guys for watching god bless Brian Little. <laughs>